all the fun stuff I have. We are gonna be making so many cool things this month in our self-care box. We're gonna be making a dragon salt, we're gonna be making a cool face mask, and we're gonna be making a little relaxation heat bag that we can use for whenever we want, and it's gonna be great. So go ahead, open your box, and I'll show you what you need inside. For this project, we are gonna be making a wish bag, a dream bag, I call it, sometimes I call it different things. It's pretty much gonna be this um, scented bag that you can heat up or cool down, and you can keep it under your pillow, you can use it if you need something to cool you down, you can use it if you need something to warm you up. I'll show you, this is what you need. So you need this cotton drawstring bag, you need this pipette or dropper, whatever you wanna call it, this bag here is lavender. So if you have allergies to uh, lavender or any type of flower type thing, you can always not use this, that's fine. Or if you just don't like lavender, that's fine, but we're gonna be adding a lavender today. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And then you have two mystery patches. I wonder which patches you got. These are the two I got. And then I also, I made another one over here, which I'll show you later, I got these two. So everyone got different ones, they're all a surprise. I really hope you like the ones you got. I tried to pick out the most fun ones that we had, so I really hope you like it. You also need um, these two containers. These have tie-dye in them. There's a blue and a yellow. You need your bag of rice and then your glue. You also have the choice of using an iron to iron your patches on but of course if we are going to use an iron we need a parent's help so if you don't have that that's okay we can just use our glue okay and this activity is going to be in two parts because we are going to be tie dyeing our bag and when we tie dye our bag we have to wait a little bit of time so here's part one and we're going to be adding a part two after our bag dries and we're going to put on our patches so go ahead get everything you need here and also you're gonna need a plate. I forgot to tell you, you need a plate, something that your bag can fit on because we are gonna be doing tie dye. So you need a nice surface so that we can get our dye on it and it's not gonna get ruined, okay? You can use a baking sheet, a tray, anything you have that can get tie dye on, you need that as well. All right, so go ahead, press pause, get all the things you need in that bag plus a plate and press play when you're ready to start. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to dye our cotton bag. So what you want to do for that is carefully open these up. This powder can stain, this tie dye does stain, so make sure you don't have any fancy clothes on or you don't spill it anywhere, okay? So you want to get both of your tie dyes open like that, you're going to get your dropper ready, and we are going to go and get our bag soaking wet with really warm water as warm as we can get it we want to wash it get it really wet make sure it's fully soaked make sure there's no dry spaces move it around rub it rub it rub it and then squeeze all the water out and then we're going to put it on our plate or tray damp okay so that is the first step so take your bag go over to your sink turn it as warm as you can get it without burning yourself make sure you don't use hot you can ask a parent for this step make sure it's warm extra warm and you can squeeze it out. All right, come on back when you're ready. Okay, here is my bag. It's nice and damp. I squeezed it out. You're gonna lay it down on the surface. And the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna add some warm water to these cups. We don't want to overflow it, we just want to fill it almost to the top. You don't even need that much, maybe even like halfway. We're going to put some warm water in here and let the powder dissolve, okay? So go ahead, press pause and add water to both of your tie dyes, okay? Here we go, I can add in my warm water. Going really slow, don't want it to overflow. There we go. And now using my dropper, I'm gonna start with the yellow because if I put the blue first and then went in the yellow, it would turn green. So I'm gonna start with the yellow. I'm gonna slowly, gently 
dirt. It looks kind of orange, but that's because the color is so dark. Just keep mixing that until all of the powder is dissolved. And then I'm going to mix my blue up. Perfect. So now my dyes are ready to be used. All right, so if you haven't done it yet, press pause, mix the water in with your tie dye, and then press play when you're ready to start. All right, now I'm ready to start painting, drip painting with my pipette and my tie dyes. So I'm gonna start with yellow. I kind of rinsed mine out in my water over here. And I'm just gonna squeeze the top like this. Show me, squeeze the top like that. Let go and see how it fills up. Sometimes it takes a bit of practice to get used to it, but squeeze the bubble at the top, let go of the bubble at the top, it fills up. And then when you wanna release the liquid, you just give it a little squeeze. You give it a hard squeeze if you want the whole thing out, but we just want a little drop. There we go. So now you can create a pattern, you can do lines. I'm gonna do dots all over mine. And then when I'm done with the yellow, I'm gonna add some blue. But I'm just gonna sit down, take my time and enjoy adding the colors, watching it soak in. There we go. And then all my yellow is gone from here. You could add more yellow if you like, but I'm gonna add some blue now, squeezing the top, letting go, fills up. And then the blue is a really powerful color. So you wanna make sure you don't add too much blue all over the place, see how dark that is? Because then you won't be able to see any of your yellow. And I think you guys will already know this answer, but what happens when you mix blue and yellow? Oh, there it is. It's creating a green color. So as you go, the colors will mix a little bit and you'll be getting some green in there, some blue. And you just keep doing this until you cover your whole bag. All right, and you don't want to soak it. If you soak it in the tie-dye, it's just going to kind of create a pool of dye in the bottom. It's probably going to look teal and it's probably still going to look really awesome. So if you do add a little bit too much tie-dye and it all mixes together, that's really not a problem at all. It's probably going to look really great. All right, so go ahead, press pause, take your time, color, cover every part of canvas that you see every part of fabric that you see, cover the whole thing, and then we're gonna have to wait, but let's do that step first. All right, here is mine. It's looking really cool. And now the hardest part, we have to wait for it to dry. So you can put it outside if it's a hot day and it's not raining. You can use a hair dryer to dry it faster if you want, um, or you can just wait. And once it's dry, we're gonna be adding more stuff to it. So in the meantime, we have one more thing we can do. So go ahead, finish this, press pause and do this part if you haven't yet, and then put this aside. And you have extra tie dye. So if you have a stained shirt or a pair of socks or something you wanna add a little extra dye to, you can go ahead and do that. I would just get it wet first before you add the tie dye. Go ahead, press pause, finish dyeing your, sh your bag, put it outside and press play again when you're ready. And while we're waiting, we can get out our bag of rice and our lavender. So open it up like this and get ready to mix it together. So here we go. Get my lavender out. You can put just a little bit, give it a smell if you want. It kind of smells like flowers. Lavender is known to help you sleep at night and this is supposed to be for like nighttime, what we're making. So I thought this would be nice to help you sleep. Pour it in. I'm putting the whole thing in because I like lavender a lot. And then, 
We're gonna close the bag, making sure it's zipped. If you wanna make sure it's zipped, you open it up, give it a little pull, make sure it's all sealed up. Okay, mine is sealed up. Now, fun part, I'm gonna shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Mix it up until it's all incorporated. You can open it up, give it a smell if you want. But this is what we're going to be adding inside of our bag. You will be able to heat it up. And yeah, so we'll just keep it in here while we wait for our bag to dry. Uh, you can go ahead and get started on another one of your activities. Or you can just wait until this is dry. Or you can go blow dry it, put it outside. I'm going to put mine outside. It's a hot day here, so I think it's going to dry really quick. All right, so go ahead, do that, and then go to part two for when your bag is dried, all right? The bag is all dry. That did not take long at all in the sun. And now I'm gonna go rinse it out under cold water and let it dry again. And the next time I'm gonna use a hair dryer just cause I simply cannot wait. So go ahead, rinse out your tie dye and then let it dry again so that we can add our patches. My bag is fully dry. Here's what it looks like on both sides. It's rinsed, so none of this color is gonna come out anymore. Now we just need to add the patches. So what you wanna do is you wanna pick a spot for where you want your patches to go. And I just wanna let you know where it opens. You don't want it too close to where it opens because we're actually gonna be tying this up. So you wanna kinda of put your patches towards the bottom. All right, so you have two choices for how you're gonna stick on your patches the best way, but we don't all have an iron and maybe we all don't have help from an adult, but the best way to keep your patches on is to use an iron to get them to stick. But if you do not have an iron or you have no one to help you use an iron, you cannot use an iron by yourself. If you're a kid, it's very hot, it's very unsafe. So make sure you only do it if you have an adult's help. Otherwise, we can just use our glue. Okay, so if you do not have an iron and you want to just glue them on, you're gonna take the clear piece off of here. If you're using the iron, keep the clear piece on. This is what's gonna fuse it. It's kind of like a piece of glue you melt. If you don't though, go ahead and peel that clear piece off. I'm gonna show you how I do this one. And I'm gonna put glue all over this like that and then stick it on. So I guess I'll put this one over here. So if you're using glue, that is how you do it. If you're using an iron, this is how you do it. Put your patch on, you get your iron heated up nice and hot and you press down on it moving it around and we're gonna count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, Six. 19, 20. Okay, there we go. I didn't iron on my glue one. And the plastic piece is still on there or that glue piece. So now it's stuck on, but to make sure it's extra stuck, I'm just gonna flip my bag over and I'm gonna iron it from this side. And I'm gonna count for 10 seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, let me check this out. There we go. Oh yeah, that's nice and stuck on. Oh, I better probably let it cool off before you try to peel it. And there you go. Okay, so if you glued it, you have to wait for it to dry. You can use your hair dryer if you want, but if you ironed it, you can go ahead to the next step. Either way, press pause, get your patches on, and press play again when you're ready to put your rice inside. So here is one I already made before I started, and this is the one that I'm making now. I made two for when I was recording. So now I'm gonna put my rice and lavender mix into this one. So if you want to heat up your bag to make it warm and use it as a heating bag, you're going to want to just put it in for about 20 seconds before you put it any more than that to see how warm it gets. I think 20 seconds would make it warm, 30 seconds would make it a little warmer, and 40 seconds probably be really hot. Okay, so make sure you're checking your temperature of your bag. There you 
go. I have my rice in. Now I'm going to just take these two strings and I'm going to gather and pull and gather it up as tight as I can get it, okay? And then I'm going to take my two strings, cross them over. The one that's crossed over the top, I'm going to bring it under like that. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to tie it in a tight knot, okay? Just a standard knot. And I'm going to do another one to double it up like that. And now it's nice and tight and secured. However, there is a hole in here where rice is really small. It could come out of that hole. So what we want to do, to let this dry a little longer. So what we want to do is we want to fold this hole down and then we want to bring the string on each side, bring it around and then tie a knot on this side. Go. So now the rice hole is hiding inside there, and then you're going to want to double, triple knot it. But I'll show you again, just so you can see how I did it. So you make it really tight like that, roll it down, and then you want one string to go this way, one string to go this way, bring it around, and tie it in a tight triple knot. So I'm gonna tie it three times. One, two, three. You could even do it more times if you wanted. And then you can finish it with a bow or you can trim them a bit shorter. I'll just finish mine with a bow. And there you go. This looks so cool with the, um, this looks so cool with the patches and the tie dye mixed together. And there you go, I have two different ones. All right, that is all for now. Thank you so much for joining me. I had such a great time creating things with you. I hope you're proud of yourself and on to the next one. See you later. Bye.